In this video, we're going to give a quick definition of fixed points and then restate the recursion theorem in the fixed point form. We begin with defining fixed points. You know what a function is. It has a domain and a range. So for example, f, function f, takes values and maps them to some um, other value in the range. So in this example, f maps a 2 to a 4. So this is the domain and these are the range values. Now what's a fixed point? A fixed point of a function is a value that is unchanged by repeated applications of the function. So first of all we need to assume that the domain and the range are the same set. And here we have the domain and range apparently being integers. 1 is mapped to 5, 2 is mapped to 4, okay, so we can express this function with arrows like this. 1 is mapped to 5, 2 is mapped to 4, 3 is mapped to 6, 4 is mapped to itself, 5 is mapped to 2, and 6 is mapped to 4. Now, in this example, 4 is a fixed point. It's a value that is unchanged by repeated applications of the function. So if we start with 1 and apply the function, we get 5. If we apply it again, we get 2. If we apply it again, we get 4. If we apply it again, we stay at 4. So we can also get to 4 this way. If we start with 3 and apply the function, we get 6. And then we apply it to 4. Uh, we apply the function to 6 and we get 4. And then from then on, we're stuck at 4. So we can keep applying the function, but we are stuck at 4. 4, in this little, for this little function, is a fixed point. 4 is a fixed point of this function f. Sometimes we want to show the space of values in the domain and range uh, sort of more abstractly or, or pictorially. So in this two-dimensional, this is a two-dimensional representation of a space of values, maybe xy pairs or something like that, of values in space. And so the function takes one point and maps it to some other point. Okay, it takes one point and maps it to some other point. And if you keep applying the function, your point will sort of move uh, around based on the function. But eventually it may swirl into what's called an attractor. And a simple attractor is a fixed point. Applying the function here to this point will not change it. So in this particular picture, this function has three fixed points indicated by the black dots. Now when we start somewhere, for example, we might start here, it's not clear which attractor will be drawn to, or which fixed point we'll end up in. It might be this one, or it might be this one. Uh, but uh, Or uh, maybe it would uh, end up being this one over here somehow. Um, but that's the idea of fixed points. In this discussion, we're assuming that the functions are computable functions, or they're transformations. Uh, a transformation is a function that uh, stays in the same space, where the, where the domain and the range are the same set. We can also consider Turing machines, and the description of Turing machines forms a set, the set of Turing machine descriptions. So we can imagine functions or transformations on Turing machine descriptions. So here our functions are transformations and our values are descriptions of Turing machines and we're transforming one Turing machine into another. So now we can state um, the recursion theorem in a slightly different version, slightly different form, and uh, it looks like this. For any transformation function on Turing machines, there will always exist a Turing machine which is unchanged by the transformation. So for any function that takes a Turing machine and, and modifies it, turns it into another Turing machine, there's always some Turing machine for which this function, this transformation, will not do anything. There will always be a fixed point for this function. Here we're going to restate that theorem a little bit more formally, and then we're going to prove it using the recursion theorem that we've already presented. So we're going to present this as a theorem and then we're going to prove it using the recursion theorem. 
let t be any computable function. Okay, we can apply t to descriptions of Turing machines. So uh, it takes one string and maps it into another string, and we can apply this function to a description of a Turing machine, and it turns it into something else. Then there's a Turing machine such that when t is applied to that Turing machine, you'll get a Turing machine that's equivalent. And the, answer, the, the, the way we can prove this is by just showing what f is. Let f be the following Turing machine. It takes as input w, and what does it do? via the recursion theorem, it gets a description of itself, and then it computes t, the computable function, on its, that description, and it gets a new Turing machine, g, and then what it does is it simulates g on w. So you can see how this is, uh, g and f are equivalent, okay, uh, and G was obtained by applying T to the description of F. Okay, so we, T takes F and gives a new Turing machine, but they're equivalent because all F does is simulate G on W, so F does the same thing as G does. So F and T of F are equivalent. So that's our theorem, and that's our proof of the theorem.